to Tune of the Month and Happy July! I'm Mari Black and this month I have for you by very popular request a super awesome reel. In fact, this tune is so super awesome that it is in fact called Super Fly by the great Kevin O'Neill. And uh, thank you those of you who requested this. This is a tune that's a pleasure to play anytime. for stopping by. We'll see you next month. And if you're ready to play, you're ready to play. Let's do it. Okay. So maybe you already figured out this thing is in the key of B minor. B minor, two sharps, F sharp and C. And it's actually a really quick learn, especially if you're thinking in patterns. I'm going to play the whole A section a little bit slower and I'm going to take all the ornaments out for the moment. This is how we do it on the tune of the month. So you can really get the sound of the bass melody in your ear. And in fact, uh, any of this that you would like to uh, try to sound out with me, even as we're just starting here, go for it. Be mine. Two, three, uh. within the section part one the theme part two the answer part one will come back and then there's an ending and in this case as in many other cases huge similarity between part two and the ending good news for us less to learn so uh hopefully you heard that and if not you'll get used to hearing that it really helps you when you're picking out tunes by ear now the other thing you might have noticed is here I was promising to play this with no ornaments and it didn't work very well. I had to put a few in and that's because I kind of forgot to mention that this is a piping tune. And so there ends up being a situation where if you if you look at this tune written out, right, if you googled it on the internet or something like that, it will look like this. Right, but I didn't play it like that. I played Right? So there are technically all these repeated notes, but in piping tunes, those repeated notes get broken up with little ornaments that we call taps. We've done them, many of them, hundreds, thousands on Tune of the Month. Uh, so you can go check out previous videos to get accustomed with them, or you can just pick it up on the fly here. A tap is basically what it sounds like. Any available finger that's not playing the melody, I tap the string and come away. That's the uh, shortest version of that story, but it'll really get the job done. So I'm putting in a lot of taps to break up repeated notes in the melody. 
So here we are at part one, B minor. I have my B minor chord all blocked out here. That's a great example of this functional a separation tap. Sometimes they get called one, two, three, and one, two, three, and. And notice the bowing I'm using here is another bowing pattern we've seen a lot in the uh, past tunes of the month. I call it the hook three. Three down bow group, sometimes it's separate, sometimes it's slurred. Three slur up bow, and there are two extras at the end. One, two, three, one, two, three, extra. And that separation tap comes in the up bow slur. One, two, three. Got that? That's a nice little gesture. Let's put all of part one together. Functionally, if you want to decorate even more, you could throw a little hammer on on the beginning of any long notes. Did you catch that? And now it's going to start to sound really pipey because the more pipe, bag pipey, pipey, you want to make a tune, the more left hand ornaments you're going to stuff into it. Again, shortest version of that story, but it'll get you a long way. Try it again, part one, three, four. At this point, I'm all in with decorations. Do it one more time. Three, four, one, and tap. Hammer on, separation tap. You got it. All right, uh, if you'd like a couple more repetitions on that part one, feel free to just pause the video. You can even rewind and play it with me. Again, I'm happy to play with you as many times as you need. Um, in real time, I'm going on to the part two. So part one was all basically based around that F sharp note. Part two is gonna take off of the E note. Catch that little separation ornament in there. Let's do it again. Try it again. is separating the repeated B note. B, B. Does that make sense? Now I'm gonna already, even though we're just learning the tune, I'm gonna go ahead and up your ante on the bagpipe ornaments. If you want there, you can use a separation tap. Or, if your fingers are extra quick and light, you could put in a separation throne roll. So rather than just the tap, which is the a note above, right? I have the B note that's my melody and I'm tapping any other finger. I like to tap my third finger, but any other finger will work. Okay, so that would be the separation tap. If I want a throne roll, it sounds even more decorated because now instead of just having the tap on the top, I'm gonna add the bottom. So if I play those notes out by themselves, we've done this on past tunes of the month, and maybe you know it already, but I have the melody note, I go above the melody note, I go below and back to the melody, right? 
but I don't play it like that. Da 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 da. That's pedantic and awful, and it sounds like melody. It's not. It's a grace note. So I'm gonna play it real quickly. That's why it's called a throne roll. It's a roll, but I'm gonna throw it like sheep. Da da. -da. <laughs> So you see, I get through it so quickly that I've still got time to sit on the B at the end there. Try that with the throne roll. Ready? And... If your fingers don't want to move that fast, don't worry. Just do the separation tap. They should amount to about the same thing, listening-wise, right? It's just the throne roll has an extra little warble to it, right? You catch that bottom warble instead of just going ya, ra, it goes ra, ra, which I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> all right, so let's try all of part two, taking off from the E note. Separate something. When you get to that spot, you can play whatever order to make you like, a separation tap or a separation throw and roll, but we need something to break up that repeated note or else it isn't gonna sound right. Try it again, part two, starting on the E. Ready, and... Good, now we're back to part one, you remember it? Going up the B minor chord. So that one. You could use the tap or the throne roll again, your choice. There it is. It's exactly, again, the same as beginning, part one and part one again. And now we're at the ending. Start suspiciously like part two. It is exactly part two, only we leave off the last little turnaround. Tap. And finish on the root, B minor. Whoa, you have the whole A section. How did that happen so fast? You know what happened so fast? The thing repeats, right? The, those sections keep coming back. And we built ornaments in from the ground up. Let's try two whole A sections, please. A and then, of course, the repeat. See what you can do about putting in those pipe ornaments. Your separation taps you need at minimum. If you're feeling brave or sassy, go ahead and turn them into a throne roll. And if you'd like to put in any extra hammer-ons or taps, be my guest. I should say be my piper. Ready, two, three, part one. part of that roll. In Cape Breton we would call it a wiggle. Where we have the melody note, we lift up to the note below and come right back. Dra, dra, you hear it? It's well named the wiggle because it sounds kind of like Ooh. Yeah! 
So playing pipe tunes like Superfly is a great place to start exploring that, you know, pipe style ornamentation. These ornaments all work outside of piping tunes as well, or should I say, uh, extra piping tunes. We're playing around with the anatomy of a roll, right? The, there's the melody note. A roll would be melody note above, melody note below, back to the melody, five entities, right? But we can also split that up if we use just the upper auxiliary. That's called the tap. Sometimes it's also called a flap or a flick in Irish music. I don't like that as well because that's what you do to your sibling in the back seat of the car, not your fingerboard. Your fingerboard is a tap and come away. And then the bottom auxiliary, da -da -da, that's the wiggle if we play it by itself. Sometimes it's also called a warble. Everybody's got different names for these ornaments and that's because they're just they're just decoration, right? And you may even know names for those uh, beyond what I've mentioned here, beyond even what I've heard. You can make up your own names. You can call it Steve if you like. But the idea is associating a, a name with the sound so that you can start to put them in anywhere you darn well please. All right, so as you can tell, this month is a festival of ornaments and we've got a nice A section of a piping tune to boot. Now, we need a B section. And this B section of Superfly is where we get super fly. It's a little rhythmic hocket. I love this stuff. I'll play the whole section slowly so you can hear what I'm talking about. See if you can sound it out with me. This is starting on the downbeat. Two, three, and... <laughs> tunes because uh, you know a lot of bagpipes have a pretty compressed range compared with other instruments like a fiddle um, so instead of you know using lots of notes that are all over the place they get fancy by playing around with uh, cool ways to move between a limited range and that's what's happening here this is called a hocket and all I'm doing is going up the B minor scale I'm displacing the second time I go up the scale, it doesn't start on the downbeat. That's the hocket part, right? Where we have a rhythm that ends up being placed at different spots in the measure. And that's what makes it sound really cool. All right, so do this with me. Go up the scale, B minor scale, starting on the root. String players in the crowd, notice I'm scooping that ending, right? Um, up bow slur. Uh -huh. We've called that a scoop slur in past two of the months. I'm doing that because I want the next scale to start down bow as well, even though it's not the down beat. Ha ha ha. Or should I say, hock it, hock it, hock it. Ready, and up the scale and scoop. Same scale. Yeah. So the second time, hop down to the root and land up on that G note. That's the surprise, all right? And if you put that together, that is part one of the B section. It's the B minor scale hock. It couldn't be easier notes. The rhythm is what's cool. Do it with me. Three, four, down B. One. I'm scooping the ending of the second as well. Hope you got that. Good, do it again. Three, four, down Now it's so easy. How about if you started to do some sort of ornamentation on the top notes of the scale? Those are the quarter notes, longer notes, so we have time. Like this. I 
I did two throne rolls. Now you don't need to do a throne roll, you could. You could also do just a tap. Yeah, what if we tried it with a hammer-on only on both of those? Try it. First one's a little tricky because of the repeated note, but, um, sorry, because of the slur. But that could work. What if we did it with a wiggle? By the way, I'm just experimenting in real time here, same like you, in case you didn't notice. Um, you, you experiment. You say, okay, I'll try it both with hammer rolls. I'll try it both with throne rolls. And you find which ones you like, because when we actually play this tune, this hocket's going to come back a lot. And what you want to do is mix up your ornaments, because that's how you sound varied and improvisational ad libitum um, cool, in other words. So you practice all of them, all the possibilities first, and then you can mix up your favorites. So let's now play part one and play whatever ornaments you like on both those top two notes. I'm also gonna play whatever I like. We may or may not match, and that's okay. Ready? And... <laughs> scoop that last one but hey that works cool so that's part one and you've learned half the B section now all we need is the little part to turn around okay so two of the month veterans you recognize I hope some melodic patterns in there two pickups There's an up the scale and I hop down to the root. Now I'm gonna hop up and do. Did you hear that little pattern? It's a sequence. We've done lots of sequences on Tune of the Month because they appear in tunes right, left, and center. Sequence is defined as a little melodic unit that will repeat itself, but starting on either descending or ascending notes of the scale. So in this case, my first one starts on the A note. That's the unit. I descend the scale for three notes and hop back to my starting place. Sometimes I call this a Jaca Frere because it's a backwards Frere, Frere, Jaca, Frere, Jaca, Jaca, Frere. If you've hung out in two to a month, you know what that is all about. And if it makes sense to you, great, use it. Sequence, starting on the A, down the scale. Skip back to where you started. Now do the same thing starting on the G note. And now we're going to break the pattern. F sharp. All right, try that whole descending bit. It's the sequence, A note. G note. F sharp. Bad. Try that again, the descending from the high A, and there you go. Quite a few bowings will work with this, including just separate bows. I personally like a uh, tune a month classic, the hook three. We already looked at it in the A section. This is the variety that starts separate. One, two, three, slur up bow, slur, er, uh, er, uh, extra. Yeah, and it's nice, it gives it a little bit of an offbeat feel. If you want to use that hook three, do it one more time. Good. And if the hook three is new to you, we did it at uh, more length in previous Tune of the Month videos. You can go check those out if you want to, like, get your brain around that. Here, it's just decorative. Okay, so part two, we have our two pickups. Where 
we just landed. Guess what? Part one again. You got your pocket. Now the ending, just like part two. In fact, identical to part two. Wow, wait. Okay, so this is this happens sometimes that part two and the ending in a tune section are exactly the same. And that's great because now you don't have to learn anything else by ear. Double-sided sword though, now you gotta really keep track when you're playing the tune so you know where you are. And this is why when I'm playing through the section, I will still call the first one part two and I will call the second one ending. So I know if I'm in the middle of the section or the end because I can't mess up the form. That will confuse your accompanist, your dancers, your listeners, and, and probably you. All right, so use the nomenclature even though it is an exact repeat. And that's the whole B section. Let's put it together. Starts with your awesome super fly hocket. Ready? Two, three, and... <laughs> And that's all there is to it. Um, and it, when you break it down slowly, it's like, wow, there's not much going on in that melody. But you can hear how it's going to be cooler and cooler and cooler as the tempo starts to move. When you get those ornaments in, and the more the tempo moves, the more that we really feel how that hock it works. Da ka da ka da da ka da da ka da. Right? If you really land on that high note, it's extra cool. All right, so let's pretend that you've practiced that, or maybe you just pause the video now and actually practice it. But if you don't do that, let's pretend you practiced it. Let's put the whole tune together. And we're gonna play it a couple times through. It's so short. And each time we're going to let the tempo move just a little bit. Don't worry, I'm not going all the way to dance tempo. That's at the beginning of the video that you can play with once you've practiced it. But let's get this thing moving. And as we go, see how much you can put in in terms of ornaments and feel how that pocket gets cooler and cooler as we move towards dance tempo. Ready? A section. <laughs> Remember it? Put the separation taps. Two, three, and...
comfortable in circular? Yeah, awesome. So the more you can get comfortable with the melody is great because that will free up more and more of your brain power and your finger power um, to mix around those ornaments. And that's when it starts to sound really exciting and interesting and creative and all those things that they say about, you know, fancy pipers. All right, so these ideas, of course, won't just work for Superfly. Those grace notes will work for any of your fiddle tunes, and the way we're using them here especially will work in any of your piping tunes. Uh, so hopefully there's lots for you to play with, and I highly recommend go try these things out on other tunes that you like to play. All right, so as always, if you would like to see sheet music for this and any future tunes of the month, make sure you are subscribed to my email newsletter. Just go to my website, www.mariblack, that's me, .com. Link is also in the description. Uh, once you're there, you can sign up, subscribe to my monthly email newsletter in which I will send out, among other things, the sheet music for the current tune of the month. So if you are already subscribed, Superfly has already flown its way into your inbox. And if you are watching this in the future, you will have all future tunes of the month coming to you as well, which will be super fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the tune. Stick around next month. We'll play more fun things. Bye.